April 1st was a really powerful, powerful day. Uh, we started very early in the morning at 6 a.m. with a picket line at Tarkington Elementary, which is a school just down the street from the Nabisco plant um, at 73rd and Kedzie. And we, the Bakers Union elected leaders and uh, union members that were both working and laid off, you know, came out to support the teachers in their one-day strike. And then the teachers and everyone marched down to the Nabisco plant where we did a press conference with um, the recording secretary, Michael Brunson, um, who was a, a worker at the Nabisco plant uh, to talk about how important this company and these jobs are to the community and why it's so wrong for Mondelez and Nabisco to choose to um, take these jobs out of the community um, just to make even more money as if $2 billion a year for the company isn't enough, as if $21 million for Irene Rosenfeld, the CEO, isn't enough. We need funding for our school district. But on, on, on the other hand, I'm standing here in front of Nabisco, I still call it Nabisco. Yes. You know yes. it is Mondelez now. But I'm sure the people that work here will agree with me. This is Nabisco. Yes. I worked here before I became an, a teacher, an officer of the union. I was here for almost 18 years. 18 years of my life was placed in here. I met some of the best people in the world right here in this plant people that worked here for their entire lives, whose parents worked here, aunts, uncles, grandparents. This was a family business. Look what is going, look what's happening now. I was here back in 1993 when Nabisco got over $90 million for a so-called facelift. And part of that was supposed to be used for education of their workers. Look at what's going on now. We cannot continue to subsidize these corporations and then allow them to pick up and leave whenever they feel like it. So it was an incredibly powerful day. You know, we had uh, CTU, we had um, Reverend Jesse Jackson from Rainbow Push. Um, it was an incredibly powerful day. And then we all also went later on uh, to the Thompson Center um, for the big rally and march through downtown. This Nabisco campaign is an extremely important one, and it's been elevated into the presidential race for that reason. You know, we've had the major candidates on both sides um, speak out about what's going on at Nabisco because what's going on is simple corporate greed. Um, Nabisco is taking the profits that these hardworking people have created for them. They're pocketing them. They're not paying taxes on them. And they're going to shift produ production now to, to Mexico, where they can more easily exploit workers making pennies on the dollar to what an American worker would make. We can't afford to put our kids through college because you stole all our money. You stole our jobs. You stole our livelihood. All for your greed. Your never ending, never satisfying greed. That's what you are, greedy. A lot of people steal their money. If we did that, we'd go to jail. When corporate executives do that, they give them a bonus. Something's wrong with this country when that happens. But we know you're the leader already, so we're here to tell you about it. Stealing our money, starving our children. That's American children you're starving, Irene. How does it feel to know that you're starving the country that made you who you are? Hey, I'm Danny, and I'm with Fight for 15 Union from Chicago. And what we have in common with Nabisco workers is they're trying to put the Nabisco workers out of, out of work, hundreds of them. And we're trying to fight for our jobs as well, trying to get minimum wage and equality. So we're out here to support them because they need a job as well as, as us. So we're all in solidarity together. We want to start this off. We got our friends, uh, we got our members from Chicago coming up. Just gather around in here. Come on, move up in here. Fill this space up in here if you would. Remember, we're going to be on, uh, we're being on a video. So move up in here, get in the space in front. And we are here to send a loud, clear message to Mondelisa shareholders, right? Absolutely. Let me tell you a little bit about how we got right here today. On May the 15th of last year, 2015, this company wanted to have a meeting. So both Jethro and I and the stewards and, uh, and the officers from Local 300 attended that meeting in Chicago. And here's what they wanted to tell us. 
If your people in Chicago want to, will give back $46 million a year every single year from now until time in memoriam, right? We will consider putting a $130 million investment into your plan, wow. right? That's 60% of the wages and benefits made by everybody that works in there, right? For a, for a consideration of $130 million. Well, let's face it. They took American worker profits and built a $500 million factory in Salinas, Mexico, and they had the intent of sending that stuff to Salinas, Mexico anyway. Regardless, they were on a fishing expedition and they wanted to know if we would break the national agreement in order to, at one particular place, in order to save jobs. So, when we talk, well, that's how we got here today, and that's exactly what we're fighting against. We have people all across this country that have been calling, and we are going to send teams out here in the future uh, to, uh, to go on the East Coast and the West Coast to, to pass this particular message. Thanks, Ron. Ron said, my name is Bob Ryder. I'm Secretary Treasurer of Chicago Federation of Labor. Do you believe in American-made products? Yeah. Yeah. Who thought that we were going to start getting Oreo cookies, of all things, from Mexico? Yeah. Hey, the brothers and sisters in Mexico, God bless them. They should be making Oreo cookies for themselves, but we should be making Oreo cookies for ourselves, right? Yeah. 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 Let these greedy people hear us. Come on. Yeah. I want to thank all of our brothers and sisters. We have Jobs with Justice here. We have Fight for 15. We have the Teachers Union. We have VCTGM. Are we excited or what? Yeah. And the auto workers as well. Yeah. Yeah. The 12.5 million members of the AFL-CIO stand 100% in solidarity with all of you today. Yeah. We've endorsed the boycott of Mondelez Nabisco products that are made in Mexico, that it's unfair for Mondelez to be offshoring jobs from the south side of Chicago to Mexico. That's not how you treat your loyal and dedicated workforce. Mondelez CEO Irene Rosenfeld made $19 million last year. $19 million. Mondelez has over $19 billion in overseas unrepatriated profits, profits they made from overseas production that they've not returned to the United States. My sisters and brothers, we are here this morning to identify the core of corporate greed, which are these corporate officers and their directors. In essence, we are here to indict Mondelez Nabisco's Irene Rosenfeld for corporate gluttony. An obsessive and outrageous feeding at America's economic trough. Today, Irene Rosenfeld will receive another $20 million payday. That means she will have been paid $185 million in the last nine years. That ain't all, my sisters and brothers. In her back pocket, she got a $35 million pension. What a gut punch. We are here. This morning, my sisters and brothers, to bring farther light to this corporation's attempt to dupe the American public and American consumers by making Americans aware that buying Mexican-made products continue to fuel the business model that this company says. But make sure you sell it back to the same people that you displaced. That's what's going on in Chicago. Let's not fall for it. And let's send a message across the country. Do not buy Mexican-made Nabisco products. Chicago is going to suffer if we, when we lose a thousand jobs on the south side of Chicago, right? Yeah. And that's not okay. It's not okay for Nabisco to take the profits that these hard-working union members have created for them, pocket them, and then move production to Mexico where they can exploit workers making pennies on the dollar, right? And we have politicians today that would like to have you believe that what's wrong with uh, the economy is uh, unions. We have politicians today that would like to have you believe that we need to fight amongst each other, that we need to blame workers in other places. But the people that we need to blame are in Congress, are our elected officials, are our politicians. They are the ones that make sure these board members don't pay any taxes. They're the ones that make sure that companies don't have any 
these are consequences for driving the race to the bottom, for exploiting workers in other countries, for leaving communities behind in the United States. That's who's to blame. Well, the reason we're here today is to send a loud, clear message to the Mondelez Board of Directors. We're here because Mondelez has begun to ship uh, Southside Chicago bakery jobs to, uh, to Mexico and, uh, and to lay off and displace uh, uh, Chicago uh, employees. So we're, uh, we're here to not only uh, explain that, uh, that it's important for communities and for the economy and for the American uh, consumer to have uh, these products, the Oreos, made in the United States, but it's also important from the standpoint of supporting families and, and, and their communities. Uh, the BCTGM uh, has been at this campaign for about six months. We just launched into a new phase, which is a boycott of Mexican-made uh, Nabisco products. We're sending teams across the country, uh, known as the Nabisco 600, laid off spokespersons from, uh, from Nabisco uh, who've been laid off, uh, BCTGM members, to spread the word on the boycott and solicit support and help uh, in, uh, in raising concern about shipping jobs across borders. This problem began to develop uh, whenever Kraft Foods Global uh, uh, split uh, it, the company in half and split the snack division into a newly created company by the name of Mondelez, and that happened in October of 2012. In 2012, uh, we, we noticed there was a definite change in how management, uh, you know, approached uh, not only the union, but approached uh, people on the shop floor. And quite frankly, the reason why we're here today is in May of 2015, the company came to us and uh, said that uh, if the uh, members at the Chicago plant would, uh, would provide $46 million in financial relief every year and on into the future every year, that they would consider not uh, put, uh, putting uh, new uh, baking lines, uh, super ovens, in, uh, in the Chicago uh, plant uh, and a $130 million investment. That amount that they were asking for would have amounted to 60% of the wage and benefit levels that were, that were under the contract uh, uh, that was in place at the time they made that offer. As a result, I mean, the union uh, could, not, uh, could not agree to that. As a matter of fact, we were, only, we were part way through a national agreement of which the Chicago plant was part of. There's no way to open that particular agreement anyhow. Not that we would for 60%. Uh, 60 but on July uh, the 31st of 2015, they announced that they would, uh, they would let um, uh, the, the work go to Salinas. We believed all along that was their intent, that their meeting on the 15th of May was pro forma and actually had absolutely nothing to do with, uh, with their true intent to try to keep the factory jobs, but to move to a, uh, a country where the uh, wages and the economic levels of, uh, of, uh, of the workforce are uh, dollars a day rather than uh, uh, what we enjoy here in, in the Chicago area. Absolutely, there's a NAFTA connection here. There's a, there's a, let, let's put it this way, you, uh, NAFTA in this case, but this country has been absolutely torn apart economically as a result of, of, of what uh, politicians and these corporations call free trade deals. They're not free. There's always a cost to them. It's always a cost to the American worker. Uh, NAFTA in 1993, uh, the, the only people that spoke up about NAFTA were, were, were labor unions in general. And there was no way that NAFTA, uh, that, that the United States uh, manufacturing base was going to sell uh, uh, their product to, to, to Mexico because the, uh, the rate of pay for Mexican workers was, was so low they couldn't afford it. So what happened? Corporations moved. Rather than product moving across the border, corporations moved, took the work from the, from the U.S. Uh, economy, made the product and shipped it back across the border, which is the same exact thing that, uh, uh, that Nabisco is doing. They are taking the work to Salinas, and without the American economy to purchase those Mexican-made products, those factories would come to a standstill in Salinas, Mexico. Well, I mean, Bill, Bill, Bill Clinton, President Clinton at the time, uh, you know, maintained that NAFTA was a good thing. And quite frankly, I mean, you know, he was a smart enough person to understand uh, the basic economics of how lopsided that deal was. It was not only lopsided from an economic standpoint and cost American workers their jobs, it was also lopsided from a health and safety standpoint, from a unionization standpoint. It was weak on, on worker rights south of the border, as well as worker rights in the United States. 
in, in, the, in the sad commentary is on NAFTA and any other free trade deal, there's always two parties that are exploited. The people that are losing their jobs to low-wage economies and the people that work in low-wage economies where these, uh, these corporations continue to push down wages and prevent those, those same people from like rising uh, on the economic ladder. I, I, I would like to say this, that the, the United States of America, with 5% of the world populations, consumes 20 plus percent of the, the, the total number of products made on Earth. And I will tell you that if the American consumer rejects the products that are made overseas and, and, and does not fuel financially the, this corporate plan of taking it elsewhere and bringing it back, this particular plan cannot survive the long-term business uh, ideals that these corporations uh, have. If it weren't for the American consumer, the Oreo, and not consuming the Oreos, which we plan to uh, uh, undertake here in this boycott, there is no reason to have a factory in Salinas, Mexico, producing it. We have the power of the purse, and that's all these corporations are after. We need to deny them that. Protectionism, you know, you, you, hear, you hear a lot of uh, people that uh, in, in corporate America talk about protectionism and how, how protectionism will help the American worker. I would like for them to list one positive thing that has happened to the American worker as a result of free trade deals where work is taken to uh, low-wage countries and then brought back here for purchase. I mean, there is absolutely nothing in it for the American consumer, nothing in it for the American worker, and, and I will say this on the consumer side. When they go to these low-wage places and they bring this product back, that, the price of that product never changes. But, but where that money goes on that stretched margin of, of profit goes in the pockets of these CEOs. Inter international trade needs to be fair trade. It needs to be trade based on, on equity, based on equity of wages, based on equity of human rights, based on equity of the ability to organize. When you have, when, when any of those things are out of whack, and things always migrate to the lowest common denominator, and that's the problem with, uh, with these trade deals that we've been negotiating, and TPP included.